the grind fault interrupter has been replaced for a model which is much easier to get and didn't have to be ordered. And as such, the top central is pretty much done now. So let's destroy it and see what's inside. So, uh, it's basically a very similar uh, coupling as uh, we have downstairs. Uh, it's uh, practically identical. So we have uh, this switch is labelled here. We've got a grid and inverter and off. Uh, and uh, the grid side is going into the ground fault interrupter. And on this side of the ground fault interrupter, there's going to be a wire going up and to the main fuses. So this is the first thing uh, that uh, sees any grid power uh, for safety reasons. Uh, so on the other side of the switch, we have the input from the inverter downstairs. Uh, so this is just going straight to the uh, switch downstairs and uh, from then straight to the inverter. It's not switched or anything, it's just uh, hooked up there. So this is uh, just going straight to the output of the uh, inverter. Uh, so if we flick this that way, we have uh, uh, inverter power for everything on the underside. And uh, down here, the two switches are hooked up in parallel. And out of focus, of course. There we go. And uh, we have the three-phase breaker for the uh, three-phase uh, power outlet that I've installed because I need one of these. Uh, so that's really nothing interesting at all. Uh, and uh, on this side, uh, we're going to still we're going to hook up the output uh, from this switch, which is going to go there and up to the uh, face rails in this thing and. I've kind of started uh, with the labeling pro project, uh, labeling pro project, labeling project for all of these because we will need to be uh, clear about what these centrals are called and uh, if they are powered by batteries or not. So this says, uh, uh, God, voltageified uh, by grid or inverter. I don't know if that's energized. That's the proper word. Energized by grid or inverter. So this can be powered even though there's a power outlet, outage or even if this is off. Very important if someone in the future wants to do work on this, they just flick the main breaker off and don't realize that this thing is still powered and then they kill themselves. That's a bad day. Uh, so there's a bunch of labeling going on all of these. Uh, so yeah, really, there, there's just uh, two uh, wires missing from this input and output there and there and uh, this is going to be good to go. Uh, and uh, we really are starting to reach a similar status uh, downstairs as well. So let's have a look. And there we have all the downstairs stuff wired up. Uh, there's uh, really nothing else going into this thing at all at this stage. Uh, so uh, we have uh, got the uh, wire, wiring for the heat pump. I put this in last night. We've got three phases and neutral going through there and down into this which ends up uh, by the safety switch over there. I haven't wired that end up yet because uh, I want to be able to run the heat pump until I have the grid uh, hooked up upstairs and I need a proper elect electrician to do that uh, if the power company is not going to be annoyed with me. And, you know, I'd rather not, not have that. Uh, so I still need to replace uh, this wire as well, going to the outlet there with a 3 times 25 square mil instead of the 3 times 1.5 that's uh, there, but that's uh, a minor issue. Uh, I've decided, as far as uh, this is concerned, I'm just going to uh, run it uh, into the safety switch uh, for the pump van, grab a face and neutral and ground, and uh, it'll be good to go. We'll have it on 16 amp breaker. There's really no need to have a separate breaker just for this because it's not good. It's not going to be used much. It's just for the lights, basically. Ah. So uh, I've actually uh, test, uh, tested this out a bit uh, since the barn. Uh, we needed to have power there a few days ago, and uh, it's uh, handily hooked up, so I can just do that and turn the inverter on, and we have power in the barn to charge the batteries while they were up uh, mounting some uh, rails on the uh, over there. So yeah, uh, I just need to do a tiny cut uh, down here to add 
uh, to a size of a hole for the final wire there. And this thing is really ready to be uh, closed up now. Beautiful. Something that I might still add to this at some point is uh, a uh, another outlet which I'd like to run straight off the inverter uh, without the switch or anything. So we have like one always inverter powered outlet, but that's you know that's extras. Uh, that would be for like monitoring equipment. I won't have like a small uh, monitoring PC here to just uh, grab data from everything and uh, feed it to. Uh, me <laughs> somewhere else for Ethernet and where we are still missing the Ethernet that's going to be pulled through here as well but that's just details. This is uh, the important thing, it's all ready to go. Oh yeah and something I should note, I've actually uh, gone through the effort of labeling all the wiring here. Every single thing is labeled clearly as to what exactly it does uh, including the grounds up there and uh, all the wires going into the switch uh, so we know exactly which of these uh, do what if we need to work on this system in the future. There's never going to be any ambiguity about any of that and the same goes for upstairs and it's just so important to do this because it's not a common solution to have any kind of battery backup in a residential setting. So if, so, if I die and someone needs to work on this, uh, you know, I'm doing them a favour. Uh, we don't want them to kill themselves. Well, curiosity killed the cat, or in this case, my house heating, uh, because I've wired the heat pump up to uh, the inverter now, and we don't have grid power yet. Uh, we've got grid access through that thing over there, the old uh, heat pump wiring, so we're not completely shit out of luck here, but uh, we really are ready for a first test. Uh, so, I've just replaced a wiring in here uh, with wiring that so it goes to the heat pump and I've done a slightly more proper job wiring the outlet and uh, light switch up here. So these are also powered on the inverter right now. Uh, replaced this wiring with 2.5 square mil. So it's uh, all uh, capable of surviving the 16 amp break. It's going to be on. So and we don't have the inverter on yet, but we can turn that on. So that's the safety switch for the heat pump and uh, we have this set to inverter uh, let's just uh, turn this on see where the fire comes out lights on oh yeah we don't have a breaker on yet so this is gonna make fire come out of something well oh, hello there the heat pump is alive. Now I don't know if this is actually going to try and run the compressor because it hasn't been off for a terrible long time and I've got the thermostat set quite low but I do think yeah we've got it set for 20.3 and it's reading 18c so in a couple of minutes uh, this is going to try and uh, start the compressor I do think uh, which can be interesting. This is an inverter uh, powered uh, heat pump, so it's not going to have a giant power on spike that uh, most heat pumps uh, do when they power on the compressor like an old timer refrigerator. So I don't think there's going to be much uh, of an issue there. Uh, but uh, this is the first time we're actually doing a proper free phase load. Uh, the lights blinked. Was that it uh, powering on the VFD? Oh, I hear a VFD spooling up. It's ramping up. Oh yeah, this is no problem. Forty something percent low, that's roughly what we'd expect. It usually runs at about four kilowatts. And it's at uh, 48 RPM, the maximum is 60, which it never goes up to unless it's uh, mid winter. So, this seems to be working just fine. I've actually got the uh, 
a solar power software here setting it up to be able to hook this to grid without having it feedback before everything is done. So we're currently running a total active power of uh, 3000 watts and uh, that's including uh, the UPS and the other room charging and powering my PC and stuff so there's about a 500 watt extra load on that. So the heat pump is really not uh, using all that much power at all. Now we can just uh, get rid of the UPS and see. Now we're powering only the light of the heat pump. Was that about 2300 watts? Yeah, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. And uh, I'm most happy to see that it's just ramping up so nicely and the inverter did not even flinch like this is an old timer TA tube. If something goes wrong with power we're going to see it on this because it's flickering uh, away as it is. So I'm super happy with that though. It's ramping up a bit. Oh yeah, up to 50. 50 RPM. Oh no, it's up to 60 RPM, there we go, so it's actually running at uh, its maximum limited power. Just over 4 kilowatts. And not a problem in the world. Inverter says 61% load, that seems to be a bit off. I would expect the heat pump to have a quite good power factor. Well, we do have an apparent load of 5.5 kilowatts, so meh. that's not too impressive. Bad power factor. Oh well. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Either way, the big issue would have been if uh, there was a giant uh, spike uh, when it turned on, uh, which would uh, draw like uh, 30 amps per phase or something and just make. Uh, the inverter angry. Uh, the inverter is not angry, so now I just can set it up so it absolutely does not try and feed back into the grid from any power source. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna let this run and uh, have my giant UPS hooked up to my heating system. Yeah, don't mind me just running my heating system off my UPS, and I'm running my UPS off my UPS and my I've got a UPS running off my UPS I've got a lot of UPS's you know a lot of UPS's